At this point, we'll calculate out velocity. And so the average velocity is just the flow rate divided by the area. We take a look at it. Our units are going to work out correctly. I've got cubic feet per second on the top. Feet squared on the bottom, so everything works out. We'll get 9.17 feet per second. And from there, we have to calculate out the friction factor. We need to know, are we going to be looking at a laminar flow, or are we going to be looking at a turbulent flow? So I take a look at my water. I was given the density and the viscosity, excuse me, the kinematic viscosity in the problem. So I take my velocity, 9.17 feet per second, multiply it by 2, divided by 12 feet, because we need that in feet, so a dimensionless parameter. And the viscosity was given in the problem as 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5 feet squared per second. And this gives us a dimensionless parameter, which we expect. 1.39 times 10 to the 5, that is a turbulent flow. And so if we go and look at it, epsilon over d is given in the problem as 0.001. So if we go to the Moody chart, we'll get an f value of 0.0216. So once again, just to take a look at that, 0.001 is right here. And we're going to be looking at a Reynolds number of 1.39 times 10 to the 5 which is right about in there. And so if I look where 1 and that line cross, we can read over. There's 2, 1, there's 2, 2. It's right about in there. So right in that general area where we're going to get an F value of 0 0.0216. And so from there, we need to go and we need to start looking at our minor losses. So we've got all of our tables from the book here. Well, we have a sharp entrance. That's a half. Sharp entrances are always a half. And so now we have our open globe valve. So our open globe valve, we'll assume it's screwed. Why am I assuming it's screwed? Because I have a screwed pipe later on. And so we look two inches screwed. Hopefully open globe valve. Oops. Did not mean to move the slide. So right there, we have a value of 6.9. Uh, while we're here, later in the problem as we work our way down, we also have a screwed 90 degree regular elbow. And so we'll just get that value also. So it's a 0.95. From there, the next thing to take a look at is we do have a long a long bend radius. We have a 12-inch radius on our bend. And as we look at things, what do we need? We need to know what R over D is. We need to know what our bend angle is. We look at the picture. It's a 90-degree bend angle, so we're going to be looking at this line right here. So R over D, well, R is our bend radius, which was 12 inches. And D is our diameter, which is 2 inches. That gives us a factor of 6. And so if we take a look at 6, that puts us about right there. And so now we read over here. And that's about a quarter of the way up. So we'll say that our loss factor for our 12-inch bend radius is going to be about 0.25. Uh, before we get to the sharp exit, we've got one more thing. We have a half-closed gate valve. So we have this chart of fractional openings in our textbook. And so we're going to be looking at gate valves, which is the black line. And so the fractional opening is H over D, where H being how much of the pipe is open. So basically a, a value of 1 would be that it's completely open. So we're going to be looking at it being half open, so that would be a 0.5. And so if we look at our gate valve, half open gate valve would be right fractional opening of 0.5. And so we read this over to here. So what are we looking at? 
looking at, uh, we use 2.7 in the problem. We use the equation to solve that. From the chart itself, for me, it looks more like 3.5. So if we used a 3.5, used a 2.7, is it going to cause a huge difference in there? No. Once again, we're reading off of the chart, so we are going to have a little bit of that variability there. Okay, and so just to sum up, what do we have? Sharp entrance of a half, open globe of 6.9, bend radius of 0.25, regular 90 degree elbow of 0.95, half closed gate valve of 2.7, sharp exit of 1.0. That gives us a total of 12.3 for the minor losses. So at this point, let's calculate out our total head. So our total head is V squared over 2G, FL over D, plus the sum of the minor Ks. This is really the only new thing that we have in this problem. So we just plug our numbers in. 9.17 feet per second squared divided by twice gravity, so 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared. The units here will end up being feet, which is what we expect. So 0 0.0216 times 400 feet divided by 2 twelfths of a foot. Those will cancel out, giving us a unitless parameter plus 12.3. Those are both unitless. We can add them together. And so once we do that, we're going to end up with a total frictional head loss of 83.7 feet. So now if we go back to our initial problem, and we now plug that in. So we have the 120 feet minus 20 feet plus 83.7 feet. That will give us the pump has to put in 183.7 feet ahead to overcome the gravity and the elevation in our system. So what do we do? Well, we go and we calculate out the power of the pump using our equation, because remember, the head of the pump is defined as the power of the pump divided by rho GQ. Rho's in our problem, 1.94 slugs per cubic foot, 32.2 feet per second squared, 0 0.02 cubic feet per second, times our 183.7 feet that the pump needs to supply to the system. And so that will come out to be 2,300 foot-pounds per second. Problem asks for horsepower, though. And so we have to do a conversion. One horsepower is 550 foot-pounds per second. So once we calculate, uh, make that last multiplication, we're going to find that we need a pump of 4.2 horsepower. Now, this is equation one, and if everything's completely right, theoretically, we're going to need 42 point, excuse me, 4.2 horsepower, but in real life, you're obviously going to be getting a bigger pump than that because you have to take into account efficiencies and everything, which we'll actually talk about in the next chapter.